Okay then folks, slight change of plan. Now I realised if I did what I initially proposed and then we went backwards through the rest of this level and then progressed onward, I'd either have to end up doubling back on myself or I would then have to go through a bunch of loading screens and even the loading screens aren't exactly <laughs> lengthy on emulator, it's still that's what I really wanted to do. Hi! I forgot about you, didn't I, Sunshine? What a lovely surprise that was. So yeah, instead we're going to finish off the rest of the level properly to collect all the goodies. It was to do with more upgrade materials. After that we're going to go straight into World 2-2. So down into the actual... the actual mines. Just for shits and giggles, really. Just for shits and giggles. Um... Mm, mixed feelings about whether I want to tackle the flame logo right away. I mean, in theory, by the time I get down there, I should have a strong enough weapon, combined with the magic buff, and the stats I've already pumped up. In fact, it's all about farming for this bloody wing spear that left me with so many souls, it was ridiculous. In theory, I should have more than enough stuff to take him out. In theory. Um, so I'm with two mines. I might. I'll see what I feel like when I get down there. If, if I get down there, I've got like a crap ton of stuff I need to go drop off. I've got a whole bunch of souls. I'm going to go through World 2-2 mostly legitimately, so no taking the quote-unquote shortcut path right away, like I normally do. I'll explain more when we get down there. Ooh, great club. Very fun weapon if you uh, play a strength build, the great club. Especially again if you give the cursed weapon buff. Yes, I'm aware it doesn't give you as much damage as, say, the Dragon Bone Smasher. It's just, I don't know, I like using it. Gives me a giggle. I tend to prefer that. I like the uh, the Grey Demon's Axe as well. The one that uh, Vanguard uses. That's fun, if you're on a strength build. Again, Kurt's weapon. Lots of fun. But yeah, in Demon Souls you could actually buff boss weapons. That was sort of the, how they made up for the fact that they weren't quite as good in a lot of ways as normal weapons. Whether it's a case that they didn't scale well, or they just had kind of bizarrely poor damage. They'd have like a special gimmick to them of some sort. And you could buff them, which was, you know. That was nice. I'll say boss weapons, demon soul weapons, whatever you want to call it. Much like the uh, the blue blood sword I've mentioned, that you can turn into absolute beast. Of a game breaking weapon, actually. With the right stats and buffs. Can I get into those cards? I don't think I can. I don't remember ever being able to do so. For a second, it looked like you should be able to somehow. I got vaguely confused. Come back here, you. Ah, nice try. We don't like rock and roll around here. Ah, interesting. Now see, if you smash those on the actual PS3, the game freaks the fuck out and stutters like a son of a bitch. On the emulator, nothing. Just smashes the barrels as was probably intended. Interesting. And yet there's other sections where you can, like, drop. So you're going to do it. Yeah, there we go. Like, if I just smash those normally, wouldn't be a problem. For some reason, since I dropped onto them, the emulator was having to figure out like, the practicalities of me dropping from a height, plus all the rest of that. It just, it didn't like it. It did not like it at all. No. Oh. Never mind, never mind. Guess we don't stand a chance, do you? See, magic and demon souls? Yeah! Yeah, this is what magic was supposed to be in the Soul series. Absolutely bloody devastating. Rather than being, as it sort of became, a slightly more efficient version of a bow and arrow. Or you had to like completely spec out your character with rings and buffs to make it a viable source of damage beyond sort of mid-game. Demon's Souls, you could wreck the entire game with a magic build. I mean, absolutely destroy it. And uh, that carried over into PvP too. Right series of rings and spells? Yeah, you could pretty much reliably one-shot anyone who attempted to invade you. Or people you invaded. There are a lot of spells and items in this game that, uh... How can I put this? They were great for PvE purposes. But, uh, yeah. If you were PvPing, you were going to get very frustrated very quickly. 
unless you took the time to properly learn ow bloody flame gecko um, to properly learn the systems like the combat and whatnot to avoid just getting smacked in the face by a a weapon with a buff that was going to take all of your health away in two swings. I kind of wish I could have played Demon's Souls when it first came out, actually. I think that's, that's that's the most fun point to play a Souls game. Because A, you can't just readily jump on the engine and go, right, what do I do now? Anytime you're vaguely unsure, you've got to actually make a choice. Which is kind of a big thing in these games. And two... Come on. Come on, puppy. There we go. There we go. Dog was rabid. Had to put it down. Um, <clears throat> until like the PvP. Like, before people had a chance to figure out exactly what weapons do what uh, type of damage, what buffs give you the best results on what weapons, what weapon upgrade paths yield the max damage for every single weapon. I mean, no matter how hard from try, ultimately there is always one weapon, one upgrade path, and one type of buff, upgrade, ring combination, that just in terms of pure numbers, gives you the most damage. It's just, it's a thing. I don't think it's possible to ever get around that. And as soon as people figure that out, I think it's worth the fun. Like, PvP especially just goes away. Because you can guarantee the vast majority of people, once that information is out there, they'll use it. It's not, well, it's not a guaranteed win. You can get around numbers with an application of skill and tactics. Plenty of people on the internet, and on YouTube specifically, have proved that over the years. You see people winning fights with, like, bare fists or with weapons that are widely known as useless even in PvE. So it's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. It's just significantly more difficult. Sort of like a, an, un an unintended skill ceiling within PvP, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's like I'm rambling now. The point is, I always wished I could have played Demon Souls in the early stages, before people figured out that you could actually destroy people with stuff like broken, uh, cracked talismans, cursed weapon uh, buffs that weren't working properly, that sort of thing. I can imagine getting invaded by someone who was like using cursed weapon legitimately. Like, they cast it, and then the health would go down, that'd be the counter. I knew if I was going to get hit by them, it'd be bad news bears, but on the other hand, the more I could drag the fight out, the more we get to a stage where either they became desperate and made a mistake, or they'd have to attempt to run away to heal up and counteract the effects of their own buff. What a nice idea. Oh, and I'm rambling now. It's a lovely, uh, very lovely and sunny day out there. I spent a vast majority of it outside relaxing, either been about cycling or just been relaxing in the garden reading. I am oddly tired now. <laughs> this probably isn't the best state of mind to be playing a FromSoft game in, but uh, we'll manage. We usually do. We usually do. All the goodies, all the goodies. I think, I think that's supposed to be the water sound that's now looping first few seconds into it instead of playing correctly. Still haven't figured out exactly what setting on the emulator is causing that to happen. It's obviously something there's stopping the game from correctly loading the ambient soundtracks. It doesn't affect like the main music, it doesn't affect the sound effects. Just like ambient stuff like water falling, uh, wind whistling, that sort of thing. God damn it. There, that's the sound effect. The laugh of the Vat Minister. That works absolutely fine. No issues. The sound of the torch seems to work more or less fine as well. Oh, now I can hear it looping now. Shouldn't have even said that, now I can hear it happening. I wonder... That's, I'll figure it out at some point. Possibly. Maybe. Probably not. Nope. No riding crop to the face, we're not into that. We didn't set a safe word. No point giggling about it. Safe words are important, yo. That's my PSA for today. <laughs> Bloody hell. It's gonna be one of those sort of days. Oh yes. Oh very yes. Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Which I believe is a mistranslation. It should have been an ephemeral eye stone. The idea being it's a stone looking like an eye that sort of shimmers in and out of existence. 
That should have been the correct uh, translation, as I understand it. From my far too many hours digging around for information about this game over the years. Yeah, I think it got spooky all of a sudden, didn't they? The spoder webs and everything. It's supposed to be a hint about what we were going to face as we progressed further into the level. I remember actually playing this the first time. I assumed I was going to encounter like spider enemies of some sort. I remember very paranoid um, progress of looking over here, these vistas, thinking, right, any sign of spiders skittering around in the distance. No, more and more spider webs and getting spookier and spookier. There's a big lift that goes downstairs. Ooh, what's going to happen? And then obviously you kind of a giant fire-breathing metal spider. As you do. I believe they have those in Australia. Call them little bleeders. Ah. Okay. Things are getting a bit too morose, a bit too relaxed this episode. Ooh, Chris Blade. Nice. Very appropriate. Reminds me, if you haven't done so already, please go and check out Deranged Band's channel. I imagine most of you people here watching this have already done so. You probably came from his channel, in fact. But still, go check it out. And now, a small limerick. There once was an old king called Alant, who from a demon asked a boon to grant. He was left rather annoyed, his kingdom destroyed, and his son whining like a little pissant. Okay. That'll become topical later on, I promise. <laughs> okay, we're back down here where the armor spider was. Spider stone. Which I still need to actually find a bow to upgrade. I think there's one in level 4? I might to buy one. Depends what order I decide to go through the rest of the levels. So if I keep progressing... I don't know what the word's supposed to be. Progressing, perhaps? Uh, through the worlds as intended. Uh, nope. No, we're going forwards, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah, okay. Um, if we keep progressing as intended, there's some other odds and ends I need to take care of. Because I need to actually... I need the... To, to show off the thing I want to show off, I need a bow before... Um, before section 2 of World 3. Need to make sure I do that first. Then we can progress. Speaking of progress... Zap ourselves a crystal lizard. You are freakishly resilient to magic. I forgot that. That's with the crisp blade. In case you didn't read the descriptions, I flashed it up there. The point of the crisp blade is it increases your magic damage. And that apparently did nothing. That's that's interesting. Concerning and interesting. Okay. In case you're wondering, that's why I avoided this. Yeah. They were farming, farting balls of exploded death. I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a fantasy version of fire damp or something. But yeah, I don't think you farm fire damp. It occurs in the mines, and I'm quite terrified to say there will be a point later on where that occurs. But uh, that's not supposed to be the point, I don't think. Okay, gentlemen, please, if you form an orderly queue, I shall stab all of you. One in turn, two in turn, three in turn. As I know, we're getting into later levels, their health pool has suddenly gone up slightly. But the main purpose of me coming here actually is to gather as many materials as possible. Because I want to try and get... If I can actually pull it off, I want a max level weapon before I even go to the flame worker. Now there's probably people sitting there thinking, you don't need to do that. Level 4, 5 or so, that's more than enough. Especially with buffs. And yeah, it technically is. I'm not going to lie, it is. But, uh... I'd rather have the edge. It's not even that he's necessarily a difficult boss per se. He's the only boss that is like a straight up fight, I think, in this entire game. Um, there's a couple of moves that are kind of irritating, and he also has what well, at this point in the series was a unique um, aggression scaling factor. So the closer he is to death, the more aggressively he will pursue you and attempt to kill you. Um, which makes a lot of sense when you think about it. If you're fighting what you think is just some puny little mortal, and then they start kicking your ass, you probably would start putting in a bit more effort. Um, it's notorious frout like people who play Demon Souls. He's the only boss who does it. And uh, the kind of speeds he eventually ends up moving at, not terribly conducive to the response time to this game. Sort of a... Uh, 
you get into a situation where if you don't know what you're doing per se, you're going to have some bad times. Like you don't know, at least generally, what his move set is. So his moveset doesn't change, it just gets faster. And uh, he gives you less, like, breaks. Like in the beginning of the fight, he'll have portions where he'll just sort of strafe side to side as if he's trying to size you up, figure out what your deal is. Uh, I think I want down stairs, I think. Mm, crystal lizard nest downstairs. I'm gonna give that a quick visit. And goodies I want. Unfortunately, I don't have the spell that would allow me to farm the lizards most effectively. Um, there's a miracle spell called Wrath of the Gods. Basically like a big explosion from your character. That is arguably the... God damn it. Come back here, you little fuck. That's arguably the most efficient way... Hey, there we go. To farm these creatures. You just drop into the middle of their nest. Uh, quit out. Reload so they all spawn in. And then just spam Wrath of the Gods. If you do it... Okay. Give you an example of what I'm talking about here. If I do this correctly, they should respawn. As long as they don't phase out of existence, they'll reset to their initial star position. You could try and sort of farm them like that. Um, ah, I've got close enough to the Black Phantoms. At least one of them is now chasing me as well. Great. Uh, are you buggering off, really, mate? This is not conducive to... Oh! There it goes. The... Oh, right, shit. I forgot this is Demon Souls, isn't it? So they don't just vanish. Yeah, they don't just vanish after you kill them for the first time, do they? They keep coming back. You can, like, farm the same uh, crystal lizard. I think it's up to three times they come back. Now, it doesn't include times you fail to get them, though. So if, you, if they phase out of existence, if they run off a cliff and die, whatever the case may be, before you kill them, that still counts as one of your three chances to get drops. However, if you kill them all three times, you'll get drops all three times, I think. It's been a while since I really bothered looking into the mechanics of the Crystal Lizards for this game. It's like, unlike, say, is it? You know, it's Dark Souls where you only get the drop once, but in theory you can get them to spawn almost infinitely? Or do they phase out of existence in Dark Souls as well? I can't remember. It's been far too long. Uh... Okay, I remember what that is now. That's fine. Don't need Greystone. Greystone is only if you're planning to go with Strength Bill. It basically changes your weapon to scale as much as possible for that weapon off Strength. In theory, you can make a Strength anything. You can make a Strength Rapier. It's pointless, because you'll, <laughs> you'll never get enough benefit from it to be worth the drop in base damage, but you could in theory... Oh, god damn it. It's Clear Stone. I don't really want Clear Stone. Uh, that's fine. We'll just keep going for a sec. Worst case story, I can always put on the ring that lets you carry more shit. We can go from there. Hey, everybody! Wow. Even with the crisp raid. That's how much damage I'm doing with magic, eh? Okay. Yeah, black phantoms are hardy in this game. In this game, they are, uh... Rather than people who are invading, per se. The idea is supposed to be that these are people who have been corrupted by demons, but having absorbed enough power to actually become a demon, per se. So these are souls, but they're, they're souls that are on their way, let's put it that way. Stupid do. There we go. You have to hit the bottom at some point. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that, you can do get some decent item drops off them if you kill them legit. Um, the first one you ever kill, you get the Black Eye Stone, which is this game's version of the item lets you invade other people's worlds. Obviously, it's not going to work on emulators. It doesn't work on the actual PS3 copy anymore since they turned off the servers, sadly. Um, but yeah. It's all in good fun. The first one is people kill you get that item amongst some other shit. I think each Black Phantom is like guaranteed to give you an ephemeral eye stone as well. I think. Let's have a look when she dies here. Yeah, there you go. Thermal Eye. Oh, he might have given me some good up upgrade materials as well. Yeah, I shouldn't have killed him like that, should I? Oh well. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Uh Should I re-chant my weapon? Probably should re-enchant my weapon, shouldn't I? Just for maximum damage when stabbing this little fool. Alright. Spell will knock him on his ass. Does, like, no damage, but at least knocks him up. <laughs> I fucked that up entirely. Nice. 
can I? Is that I can't pick that up. Do I have that much? Cra you know, let's go and kill as many of them we can. We'll worry about it later. Yep, missed that one because of the the incline. Yeah, that's also going to mess with me, isn't it? The incline preventing me from properly getting the little bastards. Cannot pick it up. Too much carry burden. I don't know what happened with my voice though. I lost track of my sentence halfway through saying it. Very strange. Let's get rid of items I don't need. And then, pop on my ring lets me carry more stuff. Oh no! That's equip bird and that's not carry weight, is it? No, it's not. Ah! Where do I get the ring that lets me carry more stuff? That's great. Herculean strength, that's the one that lets me carry more stuff. Okay. Where do I get that? <laughs> In some ways it's like playing the game for the first time. Because, yeah, I'm farming for stuff, I'm probably over leveled technically for what I'm doing. And now I'm encountering the problem everyone had with Demon Souls. The item burden. Which was, a. Uh, I don't know, it was a really weird idea, it sort of, I think it was predicated on how much Demon Souls was supposed to mimic, like, um, Western RPGs. But the problem was, the way the rest of the game was built was very much like a JRPG, which are usually built around the idea that you can have infinite supplies or, you know, up to 99 supplies or whatever. It seems to be the way the, uh, the Japanese do it when it comes to this style of game. And those two systems clash a lot in Demon Souls. Like the game will throw crap at you, just bundles and bundles and bundles and bundles of stuff. Um, you'll very quickly keep running into circumstances where you just physically... Oh, god damn it. Where you physically can't pick it up and use it. It forces you to chuck stuff away. Now, admittedly, most of the things you encounter in this game tend to be drops. So it's not the end of the world. That it can be deeply infuriating if the thing you have to leave behind is something that drops very rarely, which I've had happen to me a couple of times, especially like rare armor sets. It's like I've I've either got to throw away like half my items to be able to pick this shit up, or it's gone for good and done my next playthrough. And I just uh, it was deeply frustrating. Again, it was something they fixed in the Dark Souls series by adding stuff like the item box. Um, obviously in Demon Souls, you have one character in one location you can store items with, and that's it. Whereas I'll see in Dark Souls, anytime you pop a squat at the bonfire, you can chuck stuff in your bottomless box. Jobs are good. So it gets around. Although, admittedly, in Dark Souls, you don't have to do that because they got rid of item equip, didn't they? Item load, you know what I meant. It's like a solution that by that point wasn't needed, it was a, a bit of an odd one. If they kept item load, but included the bottomless box, that, that would have made sense. Hey, Jeff. Jeff's always working. He's diligent. Ow! Ow! Fuck. <laughs> and he is an absolute badass with a pickaxe, apparently. Die! Die, Jeff! Damn it all, man. This grass isn't cheap. I don't live in Canada. Uh, too much. God damn it. Too much crap is what I've got. I really should have gone and dumped all my stuff with uh, with Thomas before coming and doing this, really, shouldn't I? But again, it's been that long since I played. I'm just not used to having to do it. I'm used to the later games where I can just keep accumulating garbage and it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't know why I'm keeping the steel shield. I will probably never have the stats to utilize it. But it, it seems like a nice thing to have, doesn't it? Like a, a big, heavy, chunky shield to pair with your spear. I'm never going to do that, I'm never going to use it, but I've got it. Oh, fog gate. Uh, bugbear. Oh god, and the NPCs actually do like player gesture animations and stuff in this, don't they? I forgot about that. Oh, you're not mad like the rest, are you? <laughs> well, what jolly travelling companions are we? Pleased to meet you. Call me Patches. Oh. See that treasure over there? Go on and take it. Sure. My gift to you, just to show that we're friends. What's the worst that could happen, right? 
I'm glad to meet you. These soul-starved imbeciles will drive you mad. Tell me about it. It's like being in Greenwich. Okay. Yeah, and again, I wish this could have been like the first time I ever encountered patches. Obviously, I know. I know his shtick. He became a running gag in FromSoft games from here to eternity. But I can imagine what it would have been like to play this with no knowledge of what's to come. Just playing this completely blind, coming across patches here, thinking, well, this guy seems a bit weird and he's blatantly trying to lead me into a trap because there's a giant monster hanging over the entranceway to this treasure he thinks I should go pick up. I, I generally don't see how it would have been possible to not think something was going to happen if you went and got that treasure. I, can't think, I don't think there's anything in the game up to this point that would have made you think that perhaps you were going to be okay kind of thing. I realised I didn't put the fucking magic regenerating back on, did I? Uh, okay. I've got a magic sword now. Or well, magic knife. Give a couple of slaps with the magic knife. I need to actually upgrade this knife at some point. As I recall correctly, the buff it gives you to magic damage increases the higher level the blade is. I think. I might be totally misremembering. It might be an item you can't upgrade. That's entirely possible. Oh god, you guys. Right, okay. The death worms. Forgot you were a thing. I've got happily gone the rest of my life not knowing you were a thing. Unique to this level, thankfully. Pain in the arse to kill. They're armoured all over the body, so they take very little damage to most attacks. There you go, 26. And they deal a crap ton of damage back to you with that bloody fire spit. No place they're vulnerable is the fleshy bit up top. And you can target both parts of their body. If you get them in the fleshy bit... Over a thousand... What? Oh, right, they're susceptible to magic as well. I was generally confused. I was like, what? I shouldn't have been able to do that much damage, should I? And that's why, because they're susceptible to magic, and I forgot about that. They, you do get a damage bonus for hitting them in the fleshy face bit. But, uh, yeah, they're weak to magic, so they take a chunk of damage from that as well. <laughs> Bloody hell, I forgot about that. Yeah, sadly, Greystone completely, uh, completely brought this to us. Yeah, let's buff this. Because I remember you guys are pretty tanky as well to physical damage. Yeah, even with the buff, only 50 points of damage for, like, a full-powered R2 attack. Jesus Christ. There we go. Oh, I remember why it's glowing. Yeah, you do a boom thing, don't you? Holy shit! I didn't realize how far that boom went. Let's pop one of those. Okay. That was a thing that happened. What'd you drop, out of curiosity? Dragonstone. Eh. Dragonstone, that's what gives you uh, fire weapons in this game. There we go. And there's a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, I forgot just how much verticality there was in Demon Souls' design. Like there's items above me, below me, all sorts of platforms to drop to and from. I'd genuinely forgotten how complex that was, especially this level. I mean, it makes perfect sense from a lore perspective. This is where they mine the shit, so of course it's going to be littered all over the place. Absolutely covered in upgrade materials, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you could argue possibly from a gameplay perspective it's not quite great to put the majority of your available upgrade materials in one level and nowhere else. But I think it, uh, I think it matches quite nicely with what they, uh, what they're going for in a world building sense. And I can, I can forgive a lot of gameplay inconveniences if it assists with world building. A basic club. Yeah, that was what we were going to be lured over here with. Though in fact, the basic club, not actually that bad, believe it or not. Again, that seems to be a an unofficial running gag in FromSoft games. The relatively straightforward weapons are actually pretty good. You. How did you do that? Pick things up? With my hands, I've been doing it for years. You! Wasn't that difficult? Easy to impress is our patches. Ah <laughs> oh, dear dear dear. Okay. What time is it? Yeah. I should probably go take care of all the bits of business at some point. I might actually get down to the flame lurker, it seems. Hmm. I mean, not the end of the world. I might 
You know what I might do is take a breather in a sec. Then... Then come back to this a bit later in the evening. Try from there, perhaps. Although I'm not going to have a great amount of time in the evening. You know what, sorry, let's do it anyway. Say so yeah, I'll, I'll drop off here. And then a bit later on I'll... I'll kick back into things and go from there. If you know what he means, it's like a short episode. I can appreciate the, uh, the chance to do a bit more recording on this game, because I do really like playing this. As uh, the missus can attest, my long-suffering lady love, I do absolutely adore this game. And, and to think, she used to watch me play this game on stream, on Twitch. Despite, hate, despite being utterly bored shitless by this game, she used to come and watch me play it as an excuse to hang out, which I thought was very cute. Okay. Stab! Ah! Savior of the universe! It's not working, is it? It's surprisingly hard to hit low down creatures with the spear. It's not really something that affected, like pole arms, in later Souls games, but in demons, yeah. There are several weapons that are clearly made to have advantages. Like, thrusting weapons are really frustratingly difficult to make point. Oh god, he jumps! I forgot about that. The medium sized one jump. Yeah, I did not remember that. Uh, a lot of the strength weapons are really good for stuff on the floor. Slashing weapons, also good. Um, slashing weapons tend to come in two different varieties the ones that are good for crowd control and the ones that aren't. Well. It's like all the weapons have advantages and disadvantages. Ooh! Oh! <laughs> Can't jump on me if I roll. Or oh, sorry, step under you. <laughs> we call this the Boletaria two step. It's <laughs> take ages, isn't it? You know what, sod it. My patience is running thin. Let's try and push a bit further ahead. We'll, uh, we'll pick up afterwards. Okay, let's go this way. Ugh! Oh, beasties! Wormies! Hardstone! Can I take a shortcut if I land on the pile? Like I say, full damage demon souls is kind of hard to judge. Is this gonna work? No! No, it isn't. <laughs> See you around. <laughs> 